a very good evening to all of you. Thank you for joining us here in Goa at the just concluded um, meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers of the SCO, um, which was chaired by Honorable External Affairs Minister. Uh, we are extremely privileged to have him here in person with us to give us a sense of the developments and the discussions that have taken place uh, over the last one and a half days. Also joining us on the dais, uh, Sri Vinay Kwatra, Foreign Secretary, sir. Uh, Sri Dammu Ravi, Secretary, Economic Relations in the Ministry of External Affairs. As well as Srimati Yojana Patel, Joint Secretary, um, SCO Division, as well as the National Coordinator for SCO from India. With that, sir, I would request you, sir, uh, to perhaps say a few opening remarks, and then we can take a few questions. Friends from the media, we have just concluded the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers meeting today here in Goa. Uh, this was chaired by India for the first time. Uh, foreign ministers of SCO member states, the Secretary General of the SCO and Director of SCO RATS uh, took, play, took part uh, in the meeting. During the meeting, the SCO foreign ministers assessed the status of decisions that will be approved uh, at the upcoming SCO summit in July. The meeting also gave an opportunity to uh, dwell on the state of multilateral cooperation in SCO, uh, to address uh, regional and global issues of interest, talk about the reform and modernization of the organization, and assess the progress of admitting Iran and Belarus uh, to SCO uh, as new member states. Uh, as you are all aware, uh, Prime Minister Modi had articulated India's priorities for the SCO chair uh, with the theme of towards a secure SCO. The acronym SECURE was given by Prime Minister uh, because it lays out the main focus under our ongoing chairship uh, and SECURE stands for security, economic development, connectivity, unity, respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity and environmental protection. Uh, I would also like to inform you that uh, under our ongoing presidency, we have uh, successfully hosted more than 100 meetings and events so far, including 15 ministerial levels or head of agency meetings. Many of the uh, socio-cultural events hosted by India were the first of its kind in the framework of the SCO. Uh, the designation of Varanasi, Kashi, as the first ever SCO cultural and tourist capital for 2022-23, uh, I think deserves uh, special mention. It was our endeavor to create new verticals of cooperation in SCO. Uh, and as, a, as an example, I can cite uh, the field of startups and innovation, traditional medicine, science and technology, empowering youth, and reviving the Buddhist heritage uh, amongst uh, the SCO member states. The work to implement these uh, verticals uh, is already underway and uh, it is being spearheaded by India. Uh, we are also committed to strengthening and further deepening the cooperation uh, within the framework of SCO, uh, and many of our initiatives and steps were in that direction. We have opened up new areas of cooperation and intensified engagement among member states. We hope to continue the momentum of our interaction and we are obviously looking forward to the summit in July. In the course of uh, these two days, I also held fruitful uh, bilateral interactions with my counterparts from Russia, China, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. All ministers reaffirmed their support to India as the chair of SCO and express their appreciation for the contribution of India to that organization. 
I also met the Secretary General of the SCO and discussed the diversification and the deepening of SCO agenda. Um, as regards the uh, bilateral uh, relationships, uh, let me start with Russia. Uh, FM Lavrov and I noted the progress that has been made in our economic cooperation. Uh, we exchanged views on a number of regional and global developments. Uh, since the G20 meetings are ongoing and there's a BRICS uh, foreign ministers meeting which is coming up soon, uh, these two uh, were also uh, the subject of our discussion. Uh, where FM uh, Chingang of China is concerned, uh, much of our attention, uh, I think predictably, uh, went to the disengagement issue uh, in the Western sector. Yeah, but uh, here again, uh, the G20 and BRICS uh, featured uh, in the talks because China is a member of both uh, groupings. Uh, with uh, Minister Saidov of Uzbekistan, it was a warm first meeting. Uh, we took stock of our bilateral ties and agreed to have another conversation soon. Uh, this was also the case uh, with Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Nutlio of Kazakhstan. With my Tajik and Kyrgyz counterparts, uh, Foreign Minister Sirajuddin and Kulubayev, uh, now they are long-standing friends uh, with whom uh, we have a, a rolling, ongoing conversation. Uh, and uh, uh, many, uh, some of the subjects which uh, came up in the meeting uh, with them were overlapping with those uh, of the others uh, in Central Asia. They included connectivity, counter-terrorism, health, trade and energy. Uh, with all the Central Asian ministers, we agreed that the India-Central Asia format meetings in different domains uh, should take place uh, at an early date. So uh, the overall sense that I would like to share with you is that of a productive uh, SCO uh, Council of Foreign Ministers meeting. Uh, I think it was uh, useful in uh, preparing the ground uh, for the summit. So those are some opening thoughts uh, and I would be uh, delighted to take questions. Thank you, sir. Before uh, I take the questions, ground rules, please. Please introduce yourself and the organization that you represent. We'll also not be able to accommodate more than one question, even that may be difficult. Let me start. Uh, Pranay, can I start with you? Sir, Pranay Upadhyay, ABP News, se. sir, Samin. Pranay Upadhyay, ABP News. Se. Sir, my question is this, that for the SEO of the country of the SEO, the Pakistan of the SEO, Bilawal Bhutto, came to Bhutto. In India, there was a long time after a Pakistani of the SEO, but in their language, they mentioned the CPEC, and they said that they were showing the G20 in Jammu Kashmir, and they were showing the G20 in Ariel Ravaiya, and they were showing the G20 in the soil. So, how did you take this journey? And do you think that this journey, as they showed the commitment of the SEO, and the bilateral talks, can also be able to make some decisions? क्योंकि ये बातें ऐसे समय में हो रही जब भारत में आज टेरर अटैक भी हुआ है। We'll take a few questions together. Sir, hi, this is Shivangi Thakur from Z News. आज हमने देखा किस तरह से SEO समिट हुआ, लेकिन इसके बाद सर, जो पाकिस्तान के विदेश मंत्री हैं, उनका एक बयान सामने आया है और उन्होंने कहा है कि आतंकवाद पर भारत और पाकिस्तान को साथ मिलकर बैठकर बातचीत करना चाहिए क्योंकि हम भी इससे पीड़ित हैं ऐसे में जब वो यहाँ पर आए हैं द्विपक्षीय वार्ता नहीं हुई है राजौरी में आज भी हमारे जवान शहीद हुए हैं तो कैसे देखते हैं क्योंकि वो कह रहे हैं कि शॉट किप किप टाइम यार रियली सिंपल सी चीज है the Chinese readout says that situation at the border is stable. How do you see this divergence in the position? Uh, between? This, uh, the, the, the Chinese side claiming that everything is normal at the border, everything is stable at the border. Yeah, ma'am there, yeah. Hello, my name is Munize Jahangir. I'm from Pakistan, from Aaj TV. And my question to you over here is that the Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari made a bold move by coming here. 
and it is being seen as a breakthrough. He is also being criticized. But how do you, India, see it? Do you see it as a breakthrough? And what will be your roadmap in the future to resumption of at least diplomatic ties with Pakistan? So, uh, so four questions. I'll hand over huh. to you, sir. Uh, देखिए तीन सवाल जो हैं वो पाकिस्तान पर थे एक सवाल जो है वो चाइना पर था तो ये तीन सवाल जो पाकिस्तान वाले सवाल जो हैं मैं एक साथ लेना चाहूँगा ताकि बिकॉज दे आर ओवरलैपिंग क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी से दिस एज अ फॉरेन मिनिस्टर ऑफ एन एस सी ओ मेम्बर स्टेट मिस्टर भुटो जरदारी वॉज ट्रीटेड अकॉर्डिंगली as a promoter justifier uh, and i'm sorry to say spokesperson of a terrorism industry which is the mainstay of pakistan his positions were called out and they were countered including at the seo meeting itself so let me come to the specifics uh on the uh china pakistan uh, economic corridor this so called corridor i think it was made very clear not once but twice in the seo meeting that uh, connectivity is good for progress but connectivity cannot violate the territorial integrity and sovereignty of states so this has been our long standing position nobody should have any doubt about it and i assure you those who are in the room today had no doubt about it i made sure of that regarding aapka dusra jo tha wo g20 ke bare mein tha now you know i don't think there is a g20 issue to debate with anybody certainly not with a country which is nothing to do with the g20 ab jammu and kashmir was is will always be a part of india and the g20 meetings are held in all the indian states and union territory so it is completely natural uh, that it is held there jo aapka jo dusra sawal jo tha ki uh, from what i understood that uh, india and pakistan should sit together you know victims of terrorism do not sit together with perpetrators of terrorism to discuss terrorism victims of terrorism defend themselves counter Uh, acts of terrorism they call it out they delegitimize it and that is exactly what is happening so to come here and preach these uh, hypocritical words uh, as though we are on the same boat i mean they are uh, they are committing acts of terrorism and you know i don't want to jump the gun on what happened today but i think we're all feeling equally outraged so uh, so i i think i mean let's let's be very very clear on this you know on this matter the terrorism matter i mean i i would say uh, pakistan's uh, credibility is depleting even faster than its forex reserves so so you know let's let's be clear what this is about uh on uh, your question uh, you know is this a breakthrough look he came here as a member a foreign minister of an seo member state that is part of multilateral diplomacy don't please do not see it as anything more than that it was not meant as anything more than that it was not treated as anything more than that and i think nothing that from what he said or what i heard he said uh, deserves for this to be treated more than uh, that uh the china question um look uh, my understanding uh, of uh, what the chinese said i th- i think they used the word stable if i'm not mistaken i i i don't think uh, that's the issue i think the issue is that uh, there is an abnormal position in the boundary areas uh, border areas uh, along the boundary uh and uh, we uh, had a very frank discussion about it it's not the first discussion i had spoken to uh, for mr chingang uh, on the sidelines of the g20 as well uh so uh 
uh, we have to take the disengagement process forward. And uh, uh, I have made it very clear, uh, frankly, publicly as well, and my, you know, what I say within the room is not different from what I say outside, which is that India-China relations are not normal and cannot be normal if the peace and tranquility in the border areas is disturbed. I, you know, I have been very, very clear about it. I have been very consistent about it. And I have not changed my position uh, on, at this meeting either. Thank you, sir. Uh, listen, before, in the interest of efficiency, please do not repeat similar questions or try to come back to it. I think, uh, so I'll take fresh questions on that. Maha, yeah. Sir Maha Siddhiti from NDTV. Sir, how does India view uh, being part of an organization which is now largely being viewed as an anti-West grouping? Yeah, Neeraj. Sir, Neeraj, who news it in India, you said that you have no idea of taking Pakistan from G20, but you have also said that Bilawal Bhutto has also said that Sri Nagar, which is the problem of the issue of Pariyatan, they will give such an answer that they will remember them at the time. इस स्टेटमेंट को भारत कैसे देखता है? देखिए स्पेसिफिक ऐसे क्वेश्चन नहीं हो पाएगा। आई जवाब दे चुके हैं। मैं कभी जवाब दूंगा। यस यस सर प्लीज गोइंग। वन सेकंड नो नो प्लीज। थैंक यू सर। Thank you. Dmitry Melnikov from Russian TV. Sir, was uh, Ukrainian crisis part of today's discussion? And did Mr. Lavrov tell you about the recent uh, attack on Kremlin in Moscow? And what is your point of view? Thank you. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, you. Microphone coming to you. No, ma uh, no him. Yeah, right. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, Rishikesh, uh, Press Trust of India, say. Uh, sir, uh, Park FM also said that uh, we should not get caught up in weaponizing terrorism for diplomatic point scoring. So, uh, uh, what are your views? Yes, Manish, you want? Manish, yeah. Microphone. Let me take this five. Now. Sir, Manish Chan, India Rights Network. Just before his meeting with you, uh, Chinese uh, foreign minister was addressing a function in honor of Dr. Kotnis, uh, where he spoke about people-to-people -people contacts and finding a new path of peaceful coexistence. Did you see any signaling towards, uh, you know, some sort of peace move, some sort of restructuring uh, of engagement? But she answered this question. Anyway, no, uh, I, thank you, sir. Still, the people-to-people -people is important. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me start with the anti west you know, uh, is, is uh, uh, SCO perceived as an anti-Western grouping. Look, how people perceive it is something I cannot answer for. What I can say is it is a grouping uh, where membership serves India's interests. India has a multi-directional foreign policy with many partners uh, and it's not always necessary or sometimes possible that all partners get along with other partners. Uh, so this is, this is uh, characteristic of the foreign policy in today's very fluid and, uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, multipolar and sometimes uncertain volatile world. So we are members of SCO because it serves our interests. Uh, it is uh, a major Eurasian grouping. Uh, there are, you know, uh, most con other members of this grouping are countries with whom we have uh, strong bilateral relationships, obviously not all. Uh, and uh, uh, I think really that's, that's how I would uh, present uh, our participation. Uh, I will <coughs> jump that question, come to the Ukraine question because I want to take the Pakistan relation uh, related questions together. Uh, the, on the Ukraine, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say there was focused discussion on developments in Ukraine, including recent uh, uh, developments. There were references to it. There were some references to it uh, in the SCO uh, formal session. Uh, uh, there was uh, some reference to it in the informal meeting that we had uh, of the foreign ministers yesterday. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I think that would be really uh, the right uh, characterization uh, of what happened uh, in the room. Uh, regarding uh, the 
Courtney's, uh, Dr. Courtney's uh, question and people to people. Look, again, you know, I, I think uh, uh, Arindam made the point. I mean, I've answered this in a way that relations today are not normal. So, uh, to suggest somehow that they are and everything else can continue and, uh, you know, uh, while, while uh, the, the, the relevant issues, uh, the central problems are not being effectively addressed, I think uh, won't, it won't wash. That there are issues we need to discuss. I, I think uh, uh, we, we both countries need to be clear about it. Now, it may be uh, the endeavor or uh, expectation uh, to, uh, to try and project uh, you know, exactly the kind of picture which you would suggest. But I would not go along with it. I certainly will not play along with it. Uh, then, on the, on the, jo apka sawal jo tha. Dekhe, I said, unka koi G20 se lena dena nahi hai. I will also say, unka koi Srinagar se bhi lena dena nahi hai. There is only one issue to discuss on Kashmir, which is when does Pakistan vacate its illegal occupation of Pakistan occupied Kashmir. That is the only issue up for discussion. Uh, on uh, the uh, weaponization, you know, it's a very interesting statement because it unconsciously reveals a mindset. What does weaponizing something mean? It means that the activity is legitimate and somebody is weaponizing it. So you say, you are weaponizing trade, you are weaponizing technology. Somebody says you are weaponizing terrorism, that means they think terrorism is legitimate, that we should not weaponize it, that is normal. Okay. Now, what are we doing? We are countering ourselves, countering terrorism, we are defending ourselves, we are calling it out, we are exposing it. And some of it is what you saw today. So, you know, to me, we are not scoring diplomatic points. We are politically, diplomatically exposing Pakistan before the world. And as a victim of terrorism, I am completely entitled to do so. I mean, what do you mean we should not weaponize terrorism? That means as a victim, I am supposed to put up with it. I mean, so you not only commit terrorism, but you say, oh, please do not even speak about it. I mean, come on. So, uh, to me, that sentence, you know, it spoke so much about the mindset of that country. That you can all, you know, see for yourselves. Thank you, sir. We'll take a few more questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Sir, Pakistan ke Videsh Mantri ne ye bhi kaha ki peace, sir, idhar Vijay Lakshmi hu India yeah, TV se. Yeah, thank you. Sir, Pakistan ke Videsh Mantri ne ye bhi kaha ki peace is our destiny and we should not be held hostage to our history. Hum history khud create karenge, lekin aaj hi Rajori mein hamla hota hai, humare kai javaan shahid hote hain, kuch dino pehle uh. punch mein bhi hamla hua. लेकिन यहाँ पर पाकिस्तान का दोहरा चरित्र हालांकि अंग्रेजी में आप जवाब दे चुके हैं इसका हिंदी में चाहूंगी क्या पाकिस्तान का दोहरा चरित्र इसी से जग जाहिर होता है इस टॉपिक पे बात तीन बार हो चुका है का इस, उसका सबूत भी चाहिए क्या प्लीज मैम आई रिमेम्बर यस मैम गो हेड रंजन शर्मा आर टी there are speculations on SEO becoming a military alliance. How does India see the role of SEO, particularly in the security area? Yeah, behind there. Yes, please. Yeah, you, please. Here's the mic. Yeah, I'm Sandeep Dixit with the Tribune. Uh, Mr. Jashankar spoke about uh, modernization and reform of SEO. Can you please dwell a little more of it on it? Uh, last question there at the back. सर मैं विशाल पांडे हूं जी न्यूज से आपने पाकिस्तान को आतंकवाद के मुद्दे पर जब से आईना दिखाया है बिलावल भुट्टो आज काफी परेशान नजर आए वो बार बार 5 अगस्त 2019 का जिक्र कर रहे हैं 5 अगस्त वो तारीख है जब धारा 370 हटी थी कैसे जवाब देना चाहेंगे क्या उस दुख को अभी वो भूल नहीं पा रहे हैं धारा 370 जब से हटी है Okay, I think we'll close with that sir I think questions are getting very similar I will hand over the uh, no I mean I don't have time I'm really uh, unless you have something very specifically different Okay um, no, sorry, I've taken lots of questions. Let me talk one last one. Yeah. Sir, I'm going to talk about Times Now. They said that sports... 
स्पोर्ट्स स्पोर्ट्स को और राजनीति को अलग रखनी चाहिए और वो चाहते हैं कि स्पोर्ट्स को बंधक ना बनाया जाए उन्होंने ये भी आरोप लगाया कि ब्लाइंड uh, मैं कुछ कह पाऊं ये इंटरव्यू साहब के कमेंट्स के लिए नहीं उन्होंने क्या कहा और हमारा क्या रिस्पॉन्स है इस तरह से नहीं हो सकता सॉरी मैं क्लोज करना चाहूंगा सर लुक पहला सवाल पीस इज डेस्टिनी आप इन्होंने पूछा आपने पूछा ना सी वेदर पीस इज डेस्टिनी और नॉट आई डो नॉट नो टेररिज्म के नॉट बी डेस्टिनी यू नो अ कंट्री विच डज टेररिज्म के नॉट टॉक अबाउट पीस इन द सेम ब्रेथ तो साथ माने आतंकवाद भी करें और शांति की भी बात करें ये थोड़ी चलेगा तो इसीलिए मैंने कहा कि उनकी क्रेडिबिलिटी आप देखें वो तो कुछ भी कह सकते और उस देश का इतिहास इस ये कोई नई बात नहीं तो आज जो कहते हैं ना द पुराना प्लेबुक जो है वो पुराना प्लेबुक एक बार और चल रहा था लोकेशन अलग था गोवा था प्लेबुक वही था पुराना था अब जो ऑन द एस सी ओ नो लुक एस सी ओ इज अज आई वुड से रीजनल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विथ वेरी स्पेसिफिक पोलिटिकल ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड यू नो इकोनॉमिक यू कैन से इकोनॉमिक टेक्नोलॉजी पीपल टू पीपल दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ एजेंडा एंड मैंडेट दैट इट हैज आई आई रियली डो नॉट सी इट गोइंग इन द डायरेक्शन विच यू सजेस्ट Uh, on the modernization and reform of uh, seo you know uh, this was something which was discussed at the previous summit uh, the the numbers the members of seo are growing uh, the organization uh, uh, you know is uh, uh, now uh, quite a few years old the dialogue partners are growing the observers are growing so the feeling was that you know we have to i in fact one of the issues is also language uh, that seo language because of its original composition was russian and chinese so uh, today a country like india and i raised this issue specifically uh, that you know uh, we also need to make english uh, one of the working languages uh, of the seo so there are a number of issues issues of finance issues of organization of its working uh, of its membership so Uh, the overall sense was that we need to you know sit and discuss it i think one meeting has been held in kazakhstan uh, in this regard we will be holding uh, further meetings and then obviously reporting up uh, to the summit jo aapka jo anuchhed 370 wala jo sawal jo tha main aapko angrezi mein jawab de raha hu kyunki i have a phrase which is wake up and smell the coffee 370 is history sooner people realize it the better uh, and the last questions uh, you know uh, sports and terrorism see again you know this is like you are trying to normalize terrorism terrorism happens so what it's not a big deal you know there are reasons why terrorism happens they are really uh, excuses for it therefore let us carry on with the rest of life i'm sorry that you know this india will not accept that anymore i mean if terrorism happens terrorism will be countered as i said from the foreign ministry side certainly our job is to expose it to call it out to delegitimize it uh, and uh, uh, you know we will be unrelenting uh, uh, in that regard and no attempt to cover it up by suggesting we do other things uh, and you know we can carry on with uh, issues where clearly they are feeling the pinch uh, i'm sorry that won't work Thank you very much, sir. Uh, my thanks also to Foreign Secretary Sir Vinay Quatra, uh, Secretary Economic Relations Dhammu Ravi, as well as Shri Mati uh, Yojana Patel, uh, Joint Secretary SEO, for being here today. Thank you all for joining us for this special media briefing. Good evening. Thank you.